from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. When has it become unsafe to play a video game in your own house? It's heartbreaking. A 12-year-old boy on life support this morning after being struck by a stray bullet. Now at 4.30, his family's plea to find the shooter and to put an end to gun violence in our city. Plus, a new kind of policing is making a big impact in the community. This morning, a local mother is sharing her story. And new fields making good on a promise to increase diversity from the top down. Who's now leading the board and how the highly anticipated change is making history. First here at 430, I want to thank you for joining our team on this Friday on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey and we've got a familiar <laughs> face joining us in studio today. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Lauren and Todd. Good morning. I missed you guys. <laughs> be here. It's been a long time. I know. I, I didn't. I, I, I told Lauren and everybody, I was like, I didn't know Nicole was coming in. And all of a sudden she walked in the door and I was like, Nicole, because <laughs> hey, I haven't seen you in such a while. So it's uh, good to have oh, you here uh, this morning, as always. Outside right now, temperatures are in the 60s. It's really mild as you walk out the door. And today is going to be almost a repeat of yesterday, temperature wise, getting into the mid 80s across the area. 69 in Muncie, 67 right now in Bloomington, 69 in Lafayette and a pair of sixes in Indianapolis. The skies are mainly clear as you look from downtown to the north, and we are not expecting really any issues in the forecast here uh, for the day today. As far as the, the clouds, they've kind of been hanging around uh, those high, thin clouds throughout the course of this entire week, but they really haven't impacted us all that much, and you can still kind of see them spilling off into Ohio. Uh, but the rain track continues to be to our west, and it continues to be moving south to north, and as the heat builds in, all these showers are going to be going right on the periphery of the very warm air that's going to be in place across the area. Yesterday we went into the 80s. Today we're going right back there quickly through the 70s. Uh, this morning about 80 degrees by 1 p.m. and then we'll see highs right around 85 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's get a look right now at your commute. This is I-65 at West Street and MLK just north of the downtown area. You can see traffic there is quiet at this early hour. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your roads this morning as you're heading out the door for your Friday morning drive. Nicole? This morning, 12-year-old Deshaun Bills remains in critical condition on life support after being shot while playing video games in his grandmother's living room. Police tell us the bullet came from outside the home on North Leland Drive around 3.30 yesterday morning. There was no sign of a suspect in the area when officers arrived. Investigators are urging people who may have been in this area to come forward if they think they saw or heard anything. Deshaun's family says they don't want revenge at this point they just want justice. I want to say this to the one that did it. You are going to be found. And when you do, just we forgive you because we are a Christian family. We forgive you, but we won't forget it. So far, investigators say they have very little information to go on, including whether the home was the intended target of the shooting. Well, gun violence across the city has claimed the lives of three children so far this year. On March 13th, seven-year-old Eve Moore was one of four people shot and killed on a house on Randolph Street. That same month, 14-year-old Kayshawn Jones was shot to death near 34th and Forest Manor Avenue. 15-year-old faces charges for reckless homicide. And on January 24th, a shooting at a home on Adams Street left six dead, including 13-year-old Rita Childs and the unborn child of Kara Hawkins. And there have been other instances of children being hit by stray gunfire, including two from the northeast side last year that remain unsolved. In May of 2020, 16-year-old Naya Mae Cope died after she was hit by a stray bullet fired into a car that she was riding in, driven by her own mother. That shooting happened near East 38th Street and North Arlington. Arlington Avenue. And then late in March of last year, eight year old Roderick Payne was eating dinner inside his family's home at Tacoma Avenue and East 32nd Street when he was hit by a bullet that was fired from outside the house. There have been no arrests in the cases of Roderick or Naime. If you have any information on those shootings or the shooting that happened this morning, you can call Crime Stoppers. The number is 317 262 TIPS. A new type of policing is helping hundreds of families in our area. 
IMPD's Behavioral Health Unit was formed in 2016. It is a special team designed to help those with mental or behavioral health issues. The team of, has officers and licensed clinicians who respond to active crisis calls and other members who follow up after. In 2017, the unit expanded to include a mobile crisis assistance team. Janet Higgs has two sons who are schizophrenic. She says finding help is not always easy, but the officers who work with her sons truly care. I heard word of mouth about the MCAT team, so I called them and, um, sorry, they were wonderful. They, um, they work really hard to get a rapport with my sons so that um, they gain their trust and they do things like they they brought him lunch they took him out for lunch and when they found that it was necessary to um, that he was the, the gold standard for admission to a hospital is you're a danger to yourself or others they would transport them to the hospital and help facilitate with getting them moved to the hospital if you or a loved one is experiencing a mental or behavioral health issue, you can always call 911 and specifically ask for a member of this team. It is 436. Newfields making moves to improve diversity among leadership roles. That organization elected Darian Christian as the new chair of the Board of Trustees. Christian is the first black woman to lead Newfields, along with the first to lead a major art museum in the United States. Her appointment comes as part of an action plan put out by Newfields after the organization was criticized for a racially insensitive job listing for a new director. Their posting stated the candidate needs to work to attract more diverse audience while, quote, maintaining the museum's traditional core white art audience, end quote. Mark your calendars on Friday, June 18th. Dozens of farmers, artisans, and other Indiana-based businesses will be on Monument Circle. The monumental marketplace will feature locally grown food, drinks, homemade goods, and food trucks. The grassroots organization Indiana Grown says it is partnering with Downtown Indy Inc. to make this year's event bigger and better than ever while adhering to COVID safety guidelines. The monumental marketplace goes from 10 to 2 on June 18th. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire, ending 11 days of deadly violence. Straight ahead, what's next for the region? And major headaches for downtown residents less than one week into the North Split closure. The concerns they're voicing and the response from DPW. Todd? And temperatures across central Indiana were very warm yesterday. That's not the right map I wanted to show you, but here's the right one. Temperatures climbed into the 80s later uh, yesterday, and we're going to do it all over again today and also for your Saturday and also for your Sunday as it is very summer like pattern takes shape across central Indiana for several days in a row. We'll break it all down for you coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. It's 440. Welcome back. Less than a week down, 18 months to go, and downtown Indy residents are worried about increased traffic from that north split closure becoming a safety hazard while drivers continue to adjust to those changes. Drivers getting off the interstate are going through residential areas that see a lot of people biking and walking typically. One area is in the Ransom Place neighborhood where the cultural trail crosses a busy intersection. The north split closure has made that even busier. And Sylvia Zhang tells WRTV she doesn't feel safe anymore or walking with her twin daughters. She hopes the Department of Public Works addresses the issue soon. We need to let people know that it's not a highway. We need signage that says this is an urban area where you need to expect there to be vulnerable road users. Well, the Department of Public Works tells us it will take a few weeks before traffic patterns emerge as a result of the closure, and that's when DPW's traffic engineering team can address the high traffic areas. Of course, we're staying on top of the very latest from this project as it continues, so for everything you need to know, including the detours and to see maps of the closure, just visit WRTV.com. Overnight, a major breakthrough in the ongoing violence between Israel and Hamas. Both sides agreeing to a ceasefire after 11 days of unrest in the region. President Biden speaking out on America's efforts in the negotiations. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest from Washington. Overnight, Palestinian families in Gaza seen celebrating, igniting fireworks over the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. 
The region seeing 11 days of fighting, resulting in at least 260 Palestinians killed in the West Bank and Gaza, with over 3,300 wounded, 12 Israelis killed, and about 350 wounded. This morning, over 70,000 Palestinians left homeless. The decision following days of intense international pressure, including Egyptian mediation efforts, and especially from President Biden, who on a fourth call in a week with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, called for significant de-escalation. I believe the Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely and to enjoy equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and democracy. My administration will continue our quiet, relentless diplomacy toward that end. Before the agreement, Israeli strikes shaking Gaza where they continue to bury their dead. Like this 11-year-old Palestinian girl, Dima Asala, her little body carried in on that litter. Her mother experiencing a pain no parent can imagine, saying she was killed in an Israeli airstrike while getting food from a friend. Meanwhile, Hamas also pounding Israel with rockets. ABC's Matt Gutman was there. Well, you can see the Iron Dome right behind us over there. You can see it right there. Those were the rockets that were coming in. On this side, oh, families' right. lives are also altered forever. Gonna... Like this wow. woman in a shelter. Her son remaining in their Israeli home when a Gaza rocket destroyed their house. He made it out okay. He said, Mom, I'm fine. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled to travel to the Middle East in the coming days to meet with Israeli, Palestinian, and other regional leaders. Ika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And it is 444, a new law aimed at combating the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes was signed by President Biden on Thursday. The COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act will create a new position at the Justice Department to expedite review of potential pandemic-related hate crimes and incidents reported at the federal, state, or local levels. It calls for the government to work with community-based organizations to raise awareness of hate crimes during the pandemic and will also require the Attorney General to establish a way to report the crimes online. Reported hate crimes against Asians in 16 of the nation's largest cities and county, country, counties are up 164 percent since this time last year. That's according to a recent study. The House of Representatives has passed a $1.9 billion spending bill to beef up security at the Capitol in response to the deadly January 6th insurrection. The vote comes one day after the House passed legislation to establish an independent commission to investigate the attack. Progressives almost blocked the bill in a last minute effort because they did not support the funding in the bill that go directly to police. Among the budget items allocated in the bill are $250 million for Capitol ground security like fencing and sensors and $162 million to fortify doors and windows at the Capitol and House and Senate buildings. Well, the loved ones of COVID victims want to make sure their family members are not forgotten. Marked by COVID, activists are calling for a memorial on the National Mall. They're also working to establish a permanent federal COVID-19 Memorial Day on the first Monday of March. Activists want states to receive funding to add their own memorials as well. FEMA recently started reimbursing COVID funeral expenses, but activists believe it would also help to have a victim's compensation fund similar to what 9-11 victims received. This pandemic is a huge event in our history that we want to properly capture and pass on to future generations, not only the science, but the lived experience. Well, nearly 50 U.S. House members are co-sponsoring a resolution to make these requests a reality. At 446, want to bring him back here at home to talk to Todd about our forecast for today and look ahead to the weekend. You know, and it's a good forecast for you, especially if you're a fan of warmer temperatures, kind of almost a summer-like feel. Uh, that's exactly what we're going to have. Yesterday, I thought it was kind of the perfect day for us. Low 80s, low humidity. Uh, we had a little bit of a breeze and just that filtered sunshine out there. It was absolutely terrific, especially in the evening hours and we're going to do it all over again several days in a row but we will increase the temperature a couple degrees each and every day 66 degrees that's the current temperature this morning that's where we were yesterday throughout much of the morning as well just the light wind out of the southeast at seven miles per hour and everybody has temperatures in uh, the 60s currently across the area 67 in bloomington right now 66 in crawfordsville 63 from greenfield over to connorsville and muncie still has 69 degrees uh, yesterday they cranked up the speed 
heat at the track a little bit, and we also increased uh, the temperatures as well. And today we're going up a couple degrees warmer than we were yesterday. Yesterday we got to 83. As we get into the 6 o'clock hours, practice is starting to wrap up there at IMS. Uh, temperatures are going to be in uh, the upper 80s. And then if you have plans uh, this evening, you are in tip-top shape all across uh, the area. A little bit of a high thin cloud cover out there, just like we've seen the past few mornings. We'll burn that off very, very quickly and we'll get into the sunshine. And you notice the clouds off to our west and, and that's where we find the rain as well. But all these rain showers almost all week long have been going from south to north. Earlier in the week, a few of them kind of made their way into central Indiana, but with high pressure uh, building in, uh, these rain showers are just going right along the periphery of that area of high pressure. So they're really not going to make any progress off uh, towards uh, the east. They're just going to stay uh, where they are. And that is good news for our forecast as we go forward into uh, this weekend. 84 today in Peru, 85 in Indy, about 86 your high temperature as you make your way into the Columbus area, 87 in La Lafayette, 859 sunrise oh so close to 9 p.m. here uh, this evening. Temperatures will start in the 80s and then fall into the 70s. Should be terrific uh, if you have anything outdoors going on. Uh, later on uh, tonight. Overnight tonight, it's comfortable, not as cold as it has been, uh, as temperatures will be in uh, the 60s. Uh, so pretty similar to this morning. And as far as the tomorrow forecast goes, uh, we're looking at temperatures in the 60s to start your Saturday, going up into the mid 80s once again. And then as we continue into your Sunday, Sunday's the day I think we have the potential at least to get to 90 degrees, forecasting a high of 88. I don't think the 90s are going to be widespread across the area, uh, but but I do think there's the potential at least Sunday and then again Monday uh, that a couple areas could see a high temperature right around 90 degrees. And then once we get into the middle of next week, that's when it becomes a little more unsettled. That's when showers and thunderstorms, Lauren, enter the forecast. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's get a check of traffic as you're heading out on the roads this Friday, taking you down here to the southwest side, I-465 and Man Road. You can see traffic there is moving along up to speed, both eastbound and westbound. A little bit heavier than it normally is at this hour, and that's because we have this is the official detour route for drivers who normally take I-70 through the downtown area due to the north split closure. So keep in mind, we may have some heavier truck traffic down on the south and southwest sides of town on the 465 loop. Let's take you across town now to I-465 near Allisonville Road. This is up on the north side where traffic is flowing freely at this hour. We'll continue to keep an eye out for any crashes or delays and keep you updated. Nicole? Counting down to the Indy 500, coming up, a look back at the history-making year that was 1984. And coming up all new at 5, a local high school is providing a path for students to attend historically black colleges and universities. Our Troy Washington shows us how this program is changing the game. It's 450. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 454. Here's a live look at traffic just east of downtown. Pretty busy out here at I-70 at Rural Street, Keystone Avenue. Everything's still moving along up to speed. Keep in mind, we have some restrictions there at the North Split, even if you're on I-70, so you won't be able to go through to southbound I-65. We'll continue to keep you updated on that project and any issues for your commute this morning. Nicole? The 105th running of the Indianapolis 500 is just nine days away. And this morning we are taking a look back at some of the most memorable moments at the track. Former WRTV anchor Erica Fly takes us back to 1984. 1984 and a major change rolled into Indianapolis literally. In the middle of the night, Mayflower moving trucks moved the Colts football team from Baltimore to Indianapolis where they would call the brand new Hoosier Dome home. Then Mayor Bill Hudnett proclaimed March 29, 1984, one of the greatest days in the history of this city. An NFL franchise was now in place in the Circle City, the Indianapolis Colts. Just two months later, history was in the making in another sport, racing. The 1984 Indianapolis 500 still holds the record for most entries, 117. On poll day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Tom Sneva became the first to qualify for the 500 with a speed over 210 miles per hour. Six rows back on the inside of row seven, another first. Sports writer turned racer Pat Bedard became the only journalist to qualify for the 500. In the front row, two former winners, Sneva and Rick Mears, each looking for their second win. 
the two traded the lead back and forth several times. But when mechanical trouble ended Sneva's day on lap 169, the race became mirrors to lose. He led 119 of 200 laps and cruised to an easy win, outdistancing his nearest competitor by two laps. It's Mir's second 500 win and the fourth for team owner Roger Penske. All right. Thank you there, Erica. As we go forward uh, throughout this weekend, as we, today is Fast Friday, and then we have qualifications on Saturday and Sunday. We are looking at partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s across uh, the area. And then as we continue uh, into next week, temperatures stay in the 80s until at least Thursday, and the temperatures will cool off a little bit because that's when we'll bring in the chance of some scattered showers and uh, thunderstorms uh, to the forecast. But until then, if you have plans today, tomorrow, or Sunday over the course of the week, Weekend, you are in tip top shape. Make sure you stay hydrated and put that sunscreen on as well. You will definitely need it. More on your forecast and your latest news headlines coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues at 5 a.m.